Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, you're going to check in out who is God, what is God by Sadguru Fesor Zakinai. Guys, I don't think I got his name correctly, but please pardon me. Guys, let's get straight into this. My question, first question, I have a few questions to ask. Who is God? Brother, that's a question. Who is God? And this is the same question that was asked by the Christians to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was, what should I answer? We can keep on speaking about God. Then the revelation came. Oh. Surah Ikhlas, chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4. Kul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he's Allah Say he's only. Allahu samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Lam yalid, walam yulad. He begets not, nor is begotten. Walam yakul lahu kufana. There's nothing like him. This is a four-line definition of Almighty God given in the Quran. Guys, please pardon me. Sorry I posted, but I wanted to just say that this is the same. This is the same thing Christians believe. Like, Christians believe God is one and only. We believe he does not begot of... He was not begotten. So, so when we ask, where did the problem came in? Like, how did it start? But to be honest, we believe God does not begot. And we believe God is one and only. Then you ask, how did Jesus turn to his son? And I will say that the the wisdom of God, the wisest man in on earth's wisdom can't be compared to that of God. So we just can say, like, I don't know, I'll give you my explanation, but I don't know if you would take it. I feel Jesus was someone that God called him his son. Like God proclaimed him being his son. And the, the thing is there is that. If you check history, most of the prophets that was actually, most of the prophets, they didn't know they were, like, they didn't know they were prophets until a certain time of their life before, like, before God called them. But Jesus was called before he was even born. So, you see, you see Jesus' story is kind of different from everyone. And God himself called him his son, so... You really can't blame Christians for believing Jesus is the son of God. But I won't say we don't believe Jesus is literally his son, but like, I don't know the best way we explain it. Let's get back into this. Any candidate you say is Almighty God, if that candidate fits in this four-line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that candidate as God. The first is, Kul Ho Allah Ahad. Faith Allah and only. Number two, Allah Samad. Allah, the absolute and eternal. Lam yulid, walam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Walam yakul la kufana, there's nothing like him. This is the four line definition of Almighty God. Whoever you worship and say is God, if he fits in this four line definition, we Muslims have got no objection in accepting that person as God. Hope that. The soul is sacred for people. The body is filthy. How is it possible? Yes, that's what we've been doing, isn't it so? Saying God is sacred, creation is filthy. How is it possible? Your very… the very thought of God occurred to you only because you saw creation, isn't it? When you were born and you opened your eyes, you looked around, so much creation. Before you came here, so much has happened, obviously you did not create it. So you thought, there must be a creator. This is how you come to the creator, isn't it? The moment you thought there must be a creator, because you are in a human form, you thought it must be a big man. A small man like me cannot do all this, it must be a big man. Just two hands, how can it do so much creation? must be eight hands, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it so? If you were a buffalo, you would be really thinking, God is a huge buffalo. <laughs> isn't it so? It's making sense, yeah. Yes or no? <laughs> you go and ask a buffalo and see, a buffalo will insist, God is a huge buffalo, maybe four horns. 
<laughs> you know Idi Amin? You heard of Idi Amin? The Uganda man? Idi Amin declared, God is black. I agree with him. If a white man can have a white God, why can't a black man have a black God? But both those people are confused. We know God is brown <laughs> because he visited us, you know. <laughs> Some time ago, I was talking to a group of people in Nashville in Tennessee and I was telling them a joke. In the joke, I just referred to God as Him. Immediately a few ladies stood up. Do you believe God is a man? I knew where it's going. I said, see, I <laughs> see I'm only telling you a joke. <laughs> It doesn't matter. You said him, do you believe God is a man? They take the jokes very seriously <laughs> Now women are arguing, God could be a woman. Such problems exist only in those cultures in India. We have man God, we have woman God, we have cow God, we have monkey God, we have everything. Every kind, crawling one, creeping one, flying one, because we foresaw all the problems of the future. <laughs> I guess. See, when man was the most powerful force on the planet, man was naturally God. Now women are also gaining in their power, so women are questioning, why, why can't it be a woman? So tomorrow suppose dogs gain lot of power which they're gaining. So dogs will ask, why not a dog god? Actually the spelling also is close, you know <laughs> He seemed to be closer than you, isn't it? So your idea of God is just an, ex an exaggerated version of yourself, isn't it? Your idea of God is just an exaggerated version of yourself. See, you are still not able to define yourself, isn't it? Whatever definition you put on yourself is not correct. Any kind of definition you put on you, it is not enough to describe this one. When this small piece of creation is like this, the source of creation, how are you going to put a definition on it? You cannot define it, you cannot understand it, you can only dissolve into it. You can experience it, you can never know it, you can't make knowledge out of it. Whatever you knowledge, have knowledge you have about God is just pure nonsense, cultural nonsense. Depending upon which kind of culture you are in, that kind of God you have, isn't it? It can only be experienced. Experience does not mean you can eat it or you can grasp it, no. You can experience only by dissolving in it. There is no other way. So, we are just looking for methods of dissolution so that we can experience something far bigger than ourselves. Mm. Guys, honestly, I feel the only way you can experience God is being in His presence. I don't know if you have ever been, if you have ever been in a mood that you just want to thank God for what He has done for you. You just you just remember your list of things you have written down and you check it out and you see God have answered all the prayers and you just fall down and start crying, thanking Him for He have done for you a lot. And I feel the only way you can experience God, in my own opinion, is through reading His Word and praying. Like these two ways you can actually experience him. You can actually know what he's telling you to do. Like follow the commandment. Like recently I find it hard to lie. Like I don't know but if I want to say something and it's not the truth, I just can't say it. I, I don't know what is wrong with me but 
I feel it because I'm doing religious stuff a lot. So I just feel I'm being more cautious about what I'm saying recently. Like, and it's a beautiful thing I can tell you. It's beautiful. Like me walking towards righteousness is actually something I have longed for for a long while. And it's something I feel everyone wants. Like you knowing you are going through the right path. Like you're doing the right thing. You're going to meet your maker and you won't hear him telling you the path for me like i feel everyone wants it anyone watching this video wants it guys i feel the two explanation was actually correct for the experience that like i feel we experience god like we, we don't see him we can't touch him we have faith in him it's awesome guys tell me what you think about it Tell me what you think about it. Guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you this time, guys. Bless.